Hello and welcome to my weekly video blog and today on A Vogel Talks Menopause I'm going to be discussing why protein is so important in the menopause. Now unfortunately over the years protein has been given a little bit of a bad name. We've all been told that we're, we're taking too much protein and, and we should decrease it in our diet. The problem is with all the hormonal changes going on in the, the menopause and all the body changes that are going on in the menopause, our protein needs tend to increase. Now, why is protein so important? Why do we need it? Well, every single cell in our body needs protein. It's the building block of life in, in, in a way. So we need protein to help to make new cells and we need protein to repair damaged cells in the body as well. And if you think about it, in the menopause, there are so many physical changes going on. It, it's vital to make sure that, that we get enough. All our organs, our skin, our muscles, our hair and our nails need plenty of protein. Um, many hormones are made of protein and, and there are, it's not just the sex hormones, so we need protein for uh, our sex hormones, but we also need protein for other hormones that help to run our digestive system, that help to run the thyroid, that help to keep our bones healthy. So there's a whole range of hormones that are needed to, to keep us going well. We need protein for our bones. Part of the structure of bones is protein, so we need that as well as, as plenty of calcium. We need protein to help with our red blood cells too, and our red blood cells um, contain iron and help to deliver oxygen throughout the body. We also have something in the bloodstream called plasma, it's the, the kind of clear liquid in the body. And plasma contains something called lipoproteins, and these help to transport and eliminate cholesterol from our bodies, which is another very important thing, especially as, as we tend to, to get a bit older. We need protein for something called enzymes, and enzymes are very specialist compounds in the body that do specific jobs. One of the most important ones is we need lots of different enzymes to help us to break down, digest, and absorb our food. So again, very important. Um, we need hormones, sorry, we need cholesterol to help um, with our nerves. And our nerves uh, use something called neurotransmitters and the neurotransmitters help the nerves to send messages all around the body. They're needed to help to um, our nervous system. They're, they're needed to regulate our body temperature. We need these neurotransmitters. They're so very important and they are mainly made of protein. So another area where protein is very, very vital. So all of these aspects of our health depend on us getting plenty of protein. So in the menopause, if we're not getting enough protein, which areas is it really going to hit us? Well, here we are in the menopause, our hormones are starting to decrease. And if we don't get enough protein, our body's gonna find it difficult to make sex hormones to, to try and help to keep us balanced. So really important one here. We need um, protein to help with our digestion. And one of the things that happens in the menopause is that our di digestion is very often affected by falling estrogen levels. So we're not breaking down, we're not absorbing our food. So we need plenty of protein to help with digestion and for our cholesterol control, because one of the things that can happen in the menopause is that our cholesterol levels can go up too. Now, our body can't store protein, and unlike fat, which we all know is very easily um, put onto the body, we can't store protein. And if our protein needs go up in the menopause, what the body is going to use it for is the most important things to help to keep us to stay alive. So things like our nails, our hair, and our skin are going to be denied protein. And very often, one of the first indications that you are a bit low in protein is when your nails and your hair and your skin start to suffer. 
We also need plenty of protein for it to build muscle. And unfortunately, in the menopause, again, because of falling estrogen, that can affect our muscle tone. And a lot of women say to me, they feel that their muscles just feel as if they're starting to shrink. They don't work as well. So they get muscle fatigue um, much quicker too. So how are you going to get enough protein and how much do you need? Well, the, the consensus is that you really need a decent sized serving of protein at every single meal. And this is very often where the menopause diet goes wrong because we still tend to be focused a lot on, on carbohydrates. So you're looking at about a palm sized portion of protein that's roughly the thick thickness of a deck of cards. So if you eat meat and fish, then we're looking at lean meats, good quality meats, plenty of fish, and eggs as well. Eggs are, are basically a complete protein, so they're a really good addition into the diet. If you're vegetarian or you're vegan, then you're looking at combinations of nuts and seeds, pulses, grains, things like tofu can be very, very um, a, a good addition to the diet. If you're vegetarian, again, you can add in eggs. Dairy products, just watch them. Um, a small amount of dairy products can be very, very helpful for your protein needs, but don't rely on them as your main source of protein because they are quite high in, in saturated uh, fats. If you are one of those people that maybe can't face a, a big breakfast in the morning, or you just think, you know what, I don't really like a lot of meat, so I'm a vegetarian or vegan and I eat plenty of nuts and seeds and things already. If you're looking to add anything else into your diet, then these days you can get really fabulous plant-based protein powders and you could have yourself a little protein shake once a day, add it into one of your meals or just have it as a little snack in between meals. So hope you found this helpful. Um, protein is so important in the menopause and just upping it a little bit on a daily basis can make a great deal of difference to your energy levels, the way your body is coping with your hormones and also for our self-esteem in making sure that our hair and our skin and nails are still healthy right the way through the menopause and beyond. So I will look forward to seeing you next week for another edition of A. Vogel Talks Menopause.